welcome to my kitchen, specifically designed to be a kitchen and not one that chefs would use for a TV cookery programme. So it's not been that easy to fit it all in, but I think we've managed. Over there on the windowsill is my little friend, keeping out of the way because I don't want him falling in the flower or anything like that. And also, oh, while I think of it, he wants me to tell you he bought this apron for me. You can never have too many owls, he says. Anyhow, what I'm going to do now, I'll do this on the first programme, I might do it on some of the others as well. I just want to tell you, I'm not a trained chef, I'm not a trained cook, I have studied the recipe, I hope it's going to be fine, I have no idea, I've cooked for myself for the last 12 years and I'm still alive, don't, don't even think about it. So, while I go and wash my hands, you can have a look at a few pictures of Norfolk and then we'll start off. Let's look first at the ingredients that you will need. 225 grams of plain flour, a pinch of salt. You will also need some yeast. Now, if you're doing a Norfolk dumpling properly, you actually need real fresh yeast, but that's virtually impossible to get these days. So I just got one of these packets of dried yeast Thank you Tesco's, other types of yeast are available and we'll use that. And you also will need, let's bring it over a little nearer there, half a pint of warm water. Not hot, just warm. You will also need a mixing bowl, fairly large, a knife and a fork, two small or one large chopping board, bread board, whatever you want to call it, and then a one spoon with holes in it, if you can do that. If not, a spoon without a hole in it will be perfect. And you may also need your flour, a bit more of it. But we'll come to that a little bit later. Right, let's begin. And this is a really simple recipe. Really, really simple. Working on this side of the kitchen, got the ingredients on the other side. So first, put your flour into the bowl. Then add the salt and then sprinkle in the yeast. You probably don't need all the yeast, probably about half, because if you use it all you may have very large dumplings. Then bring over the water and slowly add it to the mixture. Now that's the reason I have a fork because if you want when you add the water you can start mixing it all in with your fingers but it does get a bit sticky so you may decide to do the first bit with a fork okay so let's just add probably half of this and then mix that around with our fork So the flour and the yeast and the salt absorb the water. And you can tell roughly when you've done enough because it will be, all the flour will be absorbed. I think we need a little bit more water. So we'll just add it. Probably that may well be enough. So then we'll mix it and just keep mixing until all the flour is absorbed. Oh, that's a big word. Yes, I thought you'd like that. You do like your big words. Right, that's sort of nearly done. Strip that off there. Now the next thing you have to do, 
and this is where it starts to get a bit messy, you need to what is called knead that flour. And to do that, you probably are best to use your one of your bread boards or your chopping boards or whatever you like to call them. It's probably best to open your flour before you get fingers all sticky, but you know, who's a professional cook? So put some flour on the breadboard, which will stop the um just realised there's more owls here and I forgot to mention it. Right. So then you go about kneading it. At this stage I better tell you that knead as in I need you is spelled N-E-E-E N-E-E-D <laughs> and knead what you're doing what I'm doing to the flour is spelled K-N-E-A-D so you can see you can probably see better if I move that out of the way the Bible right you can see that all you're doing is pressing into it and then folding it and then pressing it again and then folding it again oh actually I need you back in a minute but don't worry and you do this for about I don't know, 10 minutes probably is alright. No more than that, certainly. But I doubt really whether you want to watch me doing it for 10 minutes. So I'll just pretend that I've done it all. Okay, it's needed. Let's bring uh, our bowl back. And what you then do, I don't know if you know, but yeast is what is called a rising agent. Um, and that means that it makes whatever you've got rise and you have to leave it to do that so if we make this into a I'll just show you into a sort of a round ball doesn't have to be exactly we put that in there and we're going to leave it somewhere warm well actually that's probably quite warm there let's move that a bit and we we'll cover it. Um, what should we cover it with? I think we'll cover it. It doesn't really matter what you cover it with. But I'm going to cover it. That's why I disappeared, by the way. I'm going to cover it with a tea towel. And now you need to leave that. And you put that in up. You need to leave that for probably about an hour. Shall we sit and look at the tea towel for an hour? Or shall we go and do something far more exciting? Precisely. I'm off to do something far more exciting. Okay, well, an hour has gone by. And um, just to give you some idea of the day that I recorded this, I've been sitting on the sofa waiting for a phone call from the Prime Minister uh, to offer me the job of uh, Education Secretary. Sadly for you lot, it hasn't happened. Anyway, let's see if this yeast dough mixture has risen and it certainly has risen do you remember the size it was look at the size it is now oh how amazing not really it was supposed to we have to take it out of the bowl and put it back on our breadboard but what we'll do is We'll just put a little bit more flour on there because it's still a little bit sticky. So um, here we go. And you don't need to knead it again. <laughs> you don't need to knead it again. But you can, if you want, make it into a bit more of a... It doesn't really matter because it's all going to look funny at the end anyway, I'm quite sure. But roll it into a ball if you want. Now, that says... It makes four dumplings. I'm not convinced that they're not going to be quite big if we do it, but we'll try it anyway. So this is where the knife came in. Cut the dough in four. It's easier than trying to tear it in four. Well, I'm almost tearing it in four. Oh, I don't know. We'll try it. We might have to make it into six, but we'll see how we get on with this. So, when you've done that, the next thing you need to do is to roll it, each one of them, 
into a proper ball. So there's one, ba -ba -ba -bum. there's two, if you want nice pretty dumplings then by all means try and get rid of all the cracks but you know, I'm a cook, not a plaster of walls, it's pretty obvious if you've ever seen my attempts at painting walls. So there we have four rather nice looking dumplings. Because the next thing we need to do, and this is where you little owlets, as Albert says, will need some help, won't they? Exactly. Because we need a pan of boiling water. You can either put the water in and boil it on the stove, or you can boil the kettle and pour the water in. But whatever it is, that's what you need, a pan of boiling water. Fairly large pan, as you can see. Then, one at a time, you take our dumplings and put them in the water. Now, the big question is, because the, the, the true sign of a Norfolk dumpling is if, when you put it in the boiling water, it actually swims or floats and doesn't sink. So, let us see what happens. I hope you're ready for this. I'm not sure I am. Hey, hey, it floats. Look, it's floating. It, oh, it's definitely floating. That is a floating dumpling if ever I saw one. Let's have another one. Yes, number two. Yes, number three. Oh, and number four. Oh, obviously, Mary Berry would probably have checked that the saucepan was big enough for the dumplings. Right, then you leave them for 20 minutes, which that is uh, about five to five. And we'll be back and see what happens. Five to five, 20 minutes. So we can turn the heat off and then using our spoon with a hole in it, or holes in it, we can begin to take the dumplings out and let them drain and go and put them on a plate. Right, well, I can, as you can see, I can only get three of them on the plate, so the other one will have to go somewhere else. And put it on a different plate. Traditionally, the way you eat a Norfolk dumpling, you don't use a knife and fork. You use two forks to pull it apart. Like that. Or like that. Oh, I know. Your fork stuck. And there you have... A Norfolk dumpling. And Albert's just come round to have a look as well. Do you like them? You can eat them just like that. Not when they're that hot, obviously. Or you can put them in a stew. And I've decided that tonight I'm going to make myself a stew. But five to five is a little bit early. So once I've made the stew, I'll take a little video and I'll put these dumplings in them. So if you want to add it to the stew, rather than just put it in the stew, add it to the stew when there's 20 minutes left. But I can't do that because I've already cooked these. There you are, there you have it. Norfolk dumplings. And just hang around for the next minute or so and see them in my stew. Okay, next week we're in Suffolk. What will it be? Well, if you go to the website, you'll know. But I thought I'd try and make it exciting. <laughs>